Hey there guys, it's Salus, and welcome back once again to Gaming Outside the Box. This week we're not looking at any software or uh, anything like that. We are instead going to be taking a look at a very, very sexy piece of hardware. So just sit back, relax, and prepare to be jealous as we unbox the Cyborg Mad Cat Strike 5 Gaming Keyboard. Take it away, future me. So here we have the keyboard in its box, and it's got some information on the front. Apparently it's the most adaptable keyboard out there. It's got capability of 16,000... Is it 16,000? No, 16 million, sorry. Different colour combinations for your backlight. Naturally, I'm going to go with red because of reasons. But it's also got a lot of information on the back. Such as it describes its modular design, it highlights the eyepiece there. Well, they call it an eyepiece, it's not really much of an eyepiece. And I know on the last video there were some requests from people to see me wrestle with the tape. And since my channel is a democracy and my vote doesn't count, we're wrestling with the tape. Lucky though, I bought a friend this time. This is Steve. So where's the tape? Tape along there. And any down the sides. Oh, there's tape here. There we go. Obviously, make sure it's the right way up before you open it. That was the longest pull ever. <laughs> so you've got your assembly guide here which is going to be coming very handy because this is how it comes. This is your basic keyboard set here. Let's just get it out of its bag. As you can see it's not much to look at on its own. Like so. However, the key point of this whole setup are these. Because of its modular design, you can disassemble and reassemble the keyboard at will. For example, this is your number pad, and that just clicks in. Like that. There we go. But the much touted thing about this keyboard is this. The so titled eyepiece. Now this little visual display here can display a number of things from the volume to the time of day I think you can also do stuff like it's got media controls. For some reason it's got a phone keypad if you if the camera will focus, will it will it focus? Will it focus? No. But yeah, apparently it's got a phone's keypad on it. Not entirely sure what use that's going to be, but it does have pass-through headphones and mic. Now, personally, I use a USB headset, so these aren't going much use to me. However, I can connect my speakers through them, and that'll be quite cool. I do like this red and black cable. That's actually really, really good. Let me to easily identify the keyboard. Obviously, you've got various connectors for various different setups, like... Get yourself a micro USB on this end, and uh, another one on that end. Obviously these are protecting peripheral devices through the keyboard. Let's look at the keyboard section. And by the looks of it, this one is just the spare one. Is there anything under here? Indeed. Indeed. 
Now in this parts and accessories box, I'm going to take a wild guess that it contains all the different screws for connecting the keyboard together. So let's have a look together, shall we? Ah, yes. Naturally, you've got your user manual, but I'm a man, so with that. Now, all these assorted little pieces, accessories, depend on what kind of game you want to play. For example, this has got... I don't know what that scroll wheel actually does, but we'll find out very shortly. A mode button for different macros because this keyboard has one, two, three, four different modes. So you can set up to about 32 macros, I think it is. And of course, the most vital components the wrist rest. So let's see how this looks when it's all assembled and in my PC. Now, the first thing you might notice about this keyboard is it, uh, it is absolutely mahoosive. Just to give you an idea of how mahoosive it actually is, I will show you against my old keyboard. Yeah, as you can see, it's significantly bigger than the old keyboard. And I did find out what that quote-unquote spare wire was for. Because you can have this in any configuration you want, I've gone for everything, of course. You don't always need every single wire to connect them up. And connecting them up, by the way, was very fiddly. But it's not a major down point for the keyboard. I like the fact that you've got the FPS panel down here. And that red button that you might be able to see does exactly what it does on my mouse which is it throttles back the DPI really really bad so you can have very precision aiming and that's that's quite handy I like the modular design I think it's absolutely fantastic the only thing I don't like about it is the screws took a very specific kind of screwdriver namely this little dude I don't know, bring it closer to the camera. Now, unlike some of the other products, there is nowhere to store this particular little device. At least I couldn't see anything when I was putting it together. From the same series, I have my my flight stick, and my flight stick does indeed have a little holder for the screwdriver. Screwdriver, of course, in this case being used to adjust the height of the stick. That would have been nice to have. Maybe not necessarily on the bottom, but on the top so you can see you've still got it. That would have been quite handy. The eye display is great. You've got controls for volume. You've also got a mini numpad in case you don't have the numpad attached. You've also got three different light settings available on it, as well as a button to turn the lights completely off. On the whole, I think this is a very, very well put together keyboard. It's a bit big, so if you haven't got much room, I'll be careful. But I love it, and if I had to give a recommendation, I would. So, thank you once again for watching Gaming Outside the Box. I've been Salas, we've been Gaming Outside the Box, and I will see you next time.